All right, this one is called Anime Voice Actor Exposed for Strange Hobbies. I think this has to do with Roshter. This is a guy named Kazahana Anime. Mr. VTuber Man, tell me what's up. So we're almost at the start of the summer 2024 anime season. Yes, and there sir. is a ton of anime on this list. I mean, we've got many returning shows like Oshinoko Season 2. Ta Mid! Oshinoko, dude. What a disappointment so far. I'm sorry. I gotta say it. I'm enjoying it. But where are the people on YouTube? This show is dead, bro. How the hell? How the hell is too many losing heroines outperforming Oshinoko right now? Is too many losing heroines really that good? Is A1 Pictures really cooking up? Doga Kobo washed? What's going on? Doga Kobo maybe prioritizing the Roshi instead of Oshinoko? No, I think people just got filtered out after, you know, like the second season. People get filtered out each season, stuff like that. And it's kind of like Oshinoko's training arc right now, right? Is it, is it fair to say it's Oshinoko's training arc? I don't know. It's, I hope it comes back, man. I hope they fucking... <laughs> I, hope they, I hope a pop-off episode happens pretty soon. Tower of God Season 2, and so many other follow-ups to some popular series. But also in new seasons of anime, we get introduced to some new concepts, some mm -hmm. new shows that could form into being something massive, or just could have 12 episodes and just die out. I mean, we're seeing shows like The Suicide Squad... E <laughs> or you can have four episodes and die out. How many episodes have we covered this on YouTube? Well, a lot of people were interested in Suicide Squad, right? Because of the title Suicide Squad. They're like, oh my god, and goddamn, we farmed it. The ending was amazing, but like, you know, the plot was not really a plot. It was just Suicide Squad existing and them doing fun things. It's almost like si Slice of Life Suicide Squad, you know? There is a plot, but it's not the most amazing plot. So I think a lot of people were like, well, shit, I thought that this is going to be something special. I'm not really into it. I checked it out for Suicide Squad, but it is what it is. Isekai, which was something that I didn't really expect. I mean, we got that one deer show, which... Uh... Nokotan. Okay, enough of the hot takes. <laughs> I can't just go around just, you know, trying to start controversy on every fucking anime. <laughs> Look, that's fine. I just think that it has a lot of expectations to live up to. I'm having fun watching it. Uh, yeah, you probably all know the uh, clip that I'm talking about. And also we got the My Hero movie, which uh, I don't think anybody wanted, but... I ain't gonna lie. This scene here... This scene here was the most uh, highlighted scene in the trailers and the one that got most viral, right? Because the song, the opening... Right? But like in the recent episode when it played, I noticed that there was no background song. You know, that part, I don't want to, it's not really much of a spoiler, but this scene in the actual anime episode, just like, she just awkwardly just, you know, just like dancing and just like singing by herself with no music playing. And I was like, this feels weird because in the, I know what the scene looked like in the trailer. But in the episode, it's like a totally different, like, a, a, an experience. And I'm like, hmm. Hmm, is this shit really that hyped up? No, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I, I do remember seeing this scene and being like, the fuck, this is the trailer scene. You probably all know the uh, clip that I'm talking about. And also we got the My Hero movie, which uh, I don't think anybody wanted, but it's still there. And it's... <laughs> is it that bad? I see My Hero Academia popping off right now. Kind of cool to see. But in this video, we're going to be talking about one particular anime that's coming out Roshi this summer Dede. called Alia Sometimes Hides Her Feelings in Russian. Now, yeah. obviously, that is a very weird title that you probably weren't expecting at all. And this is pretty much a kind of... A well, since we are a shitty isekai channel, you know, and all these different titles are like... I got reincarnated as a vending machine. I got reincarnated as a sword. So like, I don't know, Alia sometimes had your feeling in Russian is very normal to me. Like romancy slice of life kind of anime. And the plot line reads like this. Alia is a transfer student enjoying popularity at her new high school, often sporting a cold shoulder while earning high marks in class. She ignores her nerdy classmate, Kuze Masachika, except for whenever she blurts out a flirtatious line to him. In is he nerdy? Kind of just like a... Lazy slacker type, right? In what? What did, what did Masha call him? You don't like the uh, in what's the word where you feel in, indifferent, indifferent slacker in Russian, right? He's an otaku though. That was the whole thing of like how he stood up to like one in the morning watching the anime and talking about it, and Ali was like, <laughs> "You fucking nerd." Little does she know, Kuze understands Russian, though pretends not to. Let's see where this wacky love story takes them. So again, this is a very interesting. Also, I just noticed for the first time. An anime YouTuber guy is using any chart as their site to navigate through the different seasonal animes, which honestly I love. And I have no affiliations or sponsorships with any chart. I just find the UI very useful and convenient. 
I know my anime list exists. It's just that any char any chart, it just I don't know. The UI just seems a little bit more modern. So again, this is a very interesting concept. Obviously, there are tons of romance animes coming out all the time, and it can get a little bit boring with just having the same concept. You know, you know, kind of. <laughs> is this Rent a Girlfriend? Guys, one of these days, please let's start watching Rent a Girlfriend. I promise it'll be a fun reaction where I get mad. Kind of like students falling in love or whatever. That's kind of a common trope that we see in anime. But this with the whole Russian added to it feels a little bit different. I'm kind of excited for this. There is one fact that you probably clicked on this. I don't think it's necessarily the Russian component that makes this anime exciting. But the plot twist, right? It didn't really have to be Russian. Like she could just speak any random ass language. The Russian part is a core component for sure. Because that is her nationality. And she goes from Russia to Japan to Russia. And there's this whole timeline mindfuck of like, who is this girl in the playground at the top that Kuze was talking to that had to learn Russian just to talk to? And then they meet in the future. And, you know, and now Masha has this fucking pendant that shows Kuze's face, but not really because it's a child. It's a child Kuze with fucking the light beaming over his eyes. So you can't even confirm it. But there is a Sakun part and the Sak comes from Masachka. And now you're supposed to think like, oh, my God, it's Masachka. There's a lot of different plot twists with Yuki as well. There's so many different things going on that keeps me on my toes. Also, you, you guys... You, you never know, man. Masatsuka might not be Sakun. It's, there's a 0.00001% chance that it's some dumbass mind break of it's some other kid or Masatsuka's evil twin that also has the fucking son and name. I don't know. They could hit us with the back of the head with some bullshit like that, knowing what kind of anime this has been so far. But yes, a lot of subversion of expectations. This anime does not feel like a stereotypical traditional rom-com even though there's cliches like that it just keeps me on my toes that's very just fun and engaging this video for that i found quite interesting as you know russia and japan just don't really you know go together you don't really think of them whenever you think of i don't really have an understanding of geopolitics and history and you know <laughs> allies but okay both of the countries even though to be fair if we do look on uh, google maps here they are pretty much the closest countries to each are other they? maybe south korea is a little bit closer but literally they are almost touching so why wouldn't russia be the fuck is this a random island i know because like russia is like way out the fuck is this what is at the top of is this like a random ass island suck 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 I don't know how to pronounce that, but okay, interesting. Touching. So why wouldn't Russia be that big in Japan? I and mean, what's interesting is the main character for the show, Alia. Uh, the voice yeah. actor for Alia is Sumire Uesaka, who is actually pretty well known in the anime community. She's voiced a ton of characters recently. If we look, she's voiced in Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night. <laughs> Miko, how many people have you watched this anime, bro? Fucking <laughs> the... The mom that the main characters hijacks their stream in the beginning of the first episode. There's, yo, there's char main characters are, they, they fucking suck, man. Miko was out there trying to hustle for her daughter. These dumbass kids come and hijacks their stream. Recently, if we look, she's voiced in Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night, which came out last season. She also voiced in 100 Girlfriends, oh? who really, 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 really which love one? you. Which was a insane show. It was kind of hard to get my head around, but yeah, she plays the- Ha ha! Oh, ho, 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 ho. Wait! Wait! Mother is Arya? What? Okay, okay. The uh, mother in that, which is cool. And she just plays a lot of big name characters. And obviously now she is playing Arya, the main character. And if I quickly just play this clip from the trailer of the show, you can see that the title pretty much lives up to what it says. <laughs> So yeah, the character actually speaks Russian. It isn't just some kind of weird translation that they do, and it's still in Japanese, and they just say it. There are some people saying that the Russian is cringe, and even more people saying it's perfectly acceptable. Me? I don't, I don't speak Russian. I speak Korean, bro. I don't know. The pronunciation seems fine to... I don't know. I can't be a judge of that, but based on the comments and the feedback that I've been getting on my videos, apparently Russian is passable, permissible, acceptable. Oh, it is Russian. They actually speak Russian in the show, which I find is really cool and really unique. And no, they didn't get some other voice actor in to do this. This is pretty much all Sumide, which is kind of surprising to see in the anime industry. Obviously, there isn't very many voice actors that they can speak multiple languages. We did have that one a couple of months ago in a. Oh, yo! Tomochan is a girl! That's. Oh, you guys can't see the girl. Boom. Remember her? Dude, I loved her, man. She was great. 
That whole anime was great. Go check out Tomochan as a Girl if you actually enjoy good rom com. That's right, Gaijin Carol. A seasonal anime, I forgot what it was, but she did both of the Japanese Ooh. and English voicing Ooh. for one character, which was super cool. But no, in this, she actually uses her knowledge of the Russian language and uses it in the anime, which I find quite surprising. And you might be wondering, well, why did she actually learn this? Did she learn it just to get this? <laughs> she had a foresight. She could see that, hmm, in summer 2024, a hidden rom-com will come out of nowhere and take the season by storm. And it is not an exaggeration to say that this is the most, most anticipated. Not anticipated. This is the most high, like, um, just in terms of numbers on YouTube reactions, I'm not sure about BD, DVD, those sales like that. But just speaking purely of YouTube anime reactions, my God, the audience for this, seeking out this content, is insane. Usually, most animes, like, anytime a seasonal anime airs, what happens is there's, like, these couple animes that do well. Most of them kind of do well in the beginning and fall off after, like, episode three or so, just like Suicide Squad, Exploration Hero, and some others in my channel. And then there's these exceptional ones that are on its league of its own. Sometimes those animes for me has been series such as Classroom of the Elite. It's been Eminence in the Shadow. Oshinoko kind of was like that in season one. But right now, it's a Roche today. And the numbers are not even fucking close. The gap between number one, Roche today, and number two, which could be like Tower of God and Wistoria. Bro, it's a fucking factor of like six. It's fucking insane. Role. Has she been practicing it since she was told that she got the role? Well, no, she has actually had a deep love for Russia since the beginning, like before this anime was even out. So it's kind of perfect that she was like picked for okay. this role. And this brings me onto this article from the <laughs> Sophia University. I have okay. no idea where this is. I is this Russian propaganda? Let's check it out. I'm not sure if she was a student here, but she pretty much did an interview with some of the people over there talking about how anime can bring young Japanese and Russian people closer because obviously anime is getting a okay. lot more global and a lot of people. I think there is a shitload of Russian weebs, right? I think in Russia and Ukraine, like people love anime there. Anime is beloved by you know, globally for sure, but I, I think there's a lot of Russian weebs, man. Who, you know, will enjoy it, including people in Russia. Now, in this interview, it pretty much says that she went on a study trip to Moscow, which is the capital of Russia. They okay. pretty much just went around, had a look at stuff. I'm guessing they went to maybe some museums and stuff and just learned about the culture and everything to do with Russia. And then she was attracted by the Soviet <laughs> Union and Russia after hearing the- Like, the anthem. Have you heard the Soviet anthem, though? It's actually a, it's lit. For some reason, these fucking, these authoritarian themes, bro. I, I, I don't want to play a clip right now just for copyright issues, but like, go check them out. They are like, it's, it's actually lit. Like, I genuinely, unironically listen to like Soviet and na not just the national anthem. There's a bunch of different war songs, like themes. It's so good. The national anthem of the USSR whenever she was in high school, which again is super surprising. And she goes on to say that the anthem- I, I think there's a theme called like, hold up, we're, we're getting off topic, but I, I want to check something out real quick. Does this still exist here? I think it might be called like, um, Russian music. I think it's called Black Eyes or something. Black Eyes? Dark, was it called Dark Eyes? Dark Eyes? Russian folk song, Dark Eyes? Maybe? Yeah, shit like this. Let me just see if I can play a quick... Red Army Choir, yeah. The Red Army Choir, I remember, is the distinct name. And the Red Army Choir has a bunch of fuck... It's just military songs? And, again, I have no association... Like, this doesn't mean that you fucking support Russia and the war in Ukraine, okay? I'm just talking about the fucking song that's been posted on YouTube fucking 12 years ago. One second. What does it sound like right now? Oh, oh. It's fucking lit. It's actually so good. Music wise, Red Army Choir, that shit hits. I don't know why I listened to that shit in high school. I don't know why, but it, it, it hits. Anyways, back to the video.
fascinated her with its majestic melody and beautiful Russian tune, and that she was lucky enough to get a recommendation to enroll in a department of Russian studies at Sofia University, okay. and that she, you know, made a decision to learn it whenever she went to university, which is kind of cool, I guess. I mean, everyone has their own interests. As you know, in Japan, people are very, very strongly into whatever they're into. We've got the whole, like, train otakus thing. We've got normal otakus who just like... The fuck is a train otaku? People who are obsessed and worship trains, like the bullet train, they, they're like, wow, I salute the bullet train. Like, as much as people enjoy, like, train as a hobby? Oh, that's kind of, in that's interesting. And we've got normal otakus who just love anime and manga. And then you have people who love the USSR and Russia. And yeah, it just goes on to say that she's been extremely interested in like foreign studies and just studying Russian speaking. Is this girl going to get canceled for supporting the USSR's anthem? What's going to happen here? Because <laughs> like, you know, in terms of global tension with Russia, it's not a good look, right? It's not the Russian citizens' fault, it's the government's fault, but if you... And USSR is not, you know, the Russian government at the moment, it's in the past, but... You know, it's, it's gonna be like, CANCEL Russia DID A VOICE ACTOR FOR SUPPORTING RUSSIA'S FUCKING... I don't know, they, they might say some shit like that. And just everything to do with Russia. It's not that she's just interested in the language, she's also interested in the culture and just everything that goes on over there. And that she says, therefore, voicing a Russian character is an expertise of hers. And obviously voicing in the earlier anime is probably like the perfect fit, as I said earlier in this video. Being able to speak Russian was probably a huge help for her getting this role. Because yeah, it's kind of funny to see. Now, to be fair, it does get a little bit weird here where she goes into talking about like the Soviet era and you know what she thinks about it. She kind of like idolizes a lot of the terrible people that... Uh... <laughs> it's, it's a, quite the roster of people here. Oh boy. Again, like uh, this girl has... I hope she has good intention. I know she has... I hope. I mean... Listen, just because she's a point, <laughs> let's keep watching. Uh, you know, existed during the Soviet Union, which is a little bit weird. And yeah. obviously, a lot of people have their concerns. <laughs> yeah. She's been like pictured in like a lot of militaristic clothing, which again is where this story gets a little bit darker. She oh, does seem it's gonna get darker. Okay, I mean, you know, there, there, there is this cute gap moy contrast of cute girl in like I don't know military fucking clothing and shit like that. But let's see. Do you like? be interested in a lot of the darker stuff to do with Russia as well as the lighter you know just interested side of it but again as I said lots of people have very uh, you know specialist interests and I think just Russia and the USSR is just one bar but again this means that there is a lot of people that are very much opposed to her voicing in a lot of these anime especially the ones that don't even include the Russian stuff I mean like 100 girlfriends mm. it's a massive anime and a lot of these are massive animes and games game oh she's an overlord she's in Nikkei we know anything else here? No. Nope. And I've seen multiple posts online of people being like, she shouldn't be allowed anywhere near the uh, community and whatever. Dude, I'm surprised Rev hasn't made a video on this. Like, this would be the perfect Rev video to farm. Some insane Twitter user saying shit like, cancel Roshitere voice actor, Avaradia, because she supports the genocide or something. I don't know. Like, I could totally see a video like that. But again, she seems to be doing pretty good as a voice actor and... You can say with a lot of artists and a lot of actors and stuff like that, you separate their like art from the artist. So yeah, that's how I felt about Kanye, bro. Kanye's songs were so good back in the day, and now you know all that bullshit happening, and it's like, damn, you know. Now I associate the song. It's like, God damn it, Kanye, why'd you gotta do this? I'm not particularly trying to sway you at all in this video in whether you should support her or not support her. I just think it's kind of cool how she's like actually learned a lot about the USSR and Russia and everything like that and her actual interest in it because obviously there's lots of people that just take an anime role just because they want a job and they want to be a voice actor over yeah. actually like knowing stuff about like the show and being a specialist in Russian yeah, she and cares stuff more to do about with it. Russia which again is just super helpful whenever it comes to voicing in the anime. But yeah I'm more interested in what you guys think about this. Do you think that it's a little bit weird that she's so obsessed with the USSR? I think it's a bit all oh, for sure that a Japanese girl voice actor at the young age. I mean, she studied at that university. You know, she went to Moscow. She got exposed to Russian propaganda. I'm not sure. She learned about the culture. She likes the anthem. I love the anthem. The song is great. 
Like the music is lit. You heard a bit of it, right? Red Army Choir or some shit. But <laughs> and then, you know, I don't think, you know, worshiping or idolizing people like Joseph Stalin is the greatest PR look. But um, we'll see how this story will develop. USSR and Russia. Or do you think it's kind of a cool thing and that it could help Alia sometimes hides her feeling in Russian succeed? Because obviously this is a very specialist anime and they don't have to hire two voice actors to voice the Russian part and the Japanese part. And yeah, just let me know what you think down in the comments. Now obviously this is one of my first kind of anime videos on this new channel. So if you enjoy it, then don't forget New to channel. Like. Guys, please. This is a brand new channel. I'm sure he does like Kazahana. I'm sure he's like a big content creator doing something else. This video was pretty well formatted and you know done so go to this channel give him a like sub to his channel there's another video that i actually want to check out regarding the vtuber one it looks like he's covering seasonal anime you know video essay stuff like this which is always something that i look out for but regarding <laughs> regarding aria and the voice actor and you know her associations with the fucking new I don't know, Russia media. I think it's overblown. I don't know. It's a random fucking article. I'd have to actually go look into it, but I, I, I don't think she's, she's gonna. There's no way she's gonna say shit like, yep, I support Russia instead of Ukraine or out of some bullshit like that. At the end of the day, don't blame the people in these countries, okay? Blame the fucking shitty government that imposes their citizens to shitty situations like this. But that's it for me.